Hello, my name is Christian Popo. Hi, I am Judith State. And hi, I am Mario Soltano, and together we are representing the film Monsters. <laughs> Felicitări. Mersi. Cum ești? Emoții? Da. Al doilea copil nu mai e emoții. Nu te cred. E mai mult vorba de organizare. <laughs> Ce alții văd că mă târzie? Voi sunteți cum fac mașina? Da. Puteți să-l luați și pe fratele Alinei cu soția și copilul să mergeți toți la restaurant? Da, normal, da, da. Mulțumesc. Speram să fim mai mulți și să-i plasez pe toți. Nu te stresă. Hai că mă duc cu o bagă în lichia. Hi, welcome to the 33rd Teddy Award. My name is Jean-Bor Bobek and I'm here to discuss the film Monsters with director Marius Volteanu and leading actors Judith Stata and Christian Popa. Hi guys, welcome Hello. to the festival. Um, the film tackles a topic that could be familiar for really a lot of people about um, separation and letting go. Um, what was your starting point? for the project. Well, I did a short film in 2015 mm -hmm. where actually the whole uh, topic of homosexuality was left out. It was, okay. yeah, you, you couldn't even guess it, but it was information for the actors. It was background story. And then I saw that there were a lot of questions that the audience was asking about what was happening behind what they, they actually saw in the mm -hmm. film. And uh, I started writing and I started doing these interviews with married couples and I found two couples in which actually the, the husband was having homosexual relationships but, and in one of them he couldn't even admit it to his wife. So this is still a touchy topic in Romania and especially, I mean, it's, homosexuality is a touchy topic but more than that being a homosexual and being in a marriage in a heterosexual right. marriage, it's even, it's even worse. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's. I wanted to talk about this. Mm -hmm. it's so it was particularly important for you to bring up this yes, topic. Yes, 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 yes. Because I feel that the acceptance towards this subject, even when you find it, is superficial. Yeah. It's not something authentic. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people who are saying, "Yeah, we're okay with this subject," but then when you start talking about it, I mean. Even we had a discussion during the production phase in which uh, some people suggested that uh, we might inform the actors uh, and the, um, the, the people coming to a party mm -hmm. scene so they know what the film is about in case they would have a problem with the subject. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that, that That's actually made me really angry yeah, and I said if, if he would have had, uh, the character would have had a uh, an extramarital relationship to a woman, I'm yeah. sure we wouldn't have to inform anyone, so why yeah. should we do that? Um, so in that sense, uh, does the film kind of provide an authentic look on the situation and the perception of homosexuality? In yeah, Romania? I think it does, and I think the scenes that do this the most are, are the scenes in which Christie's character, Arthur, is meeting another man. Yeah. And then through that man and through his ideas and through the things he's saying, you actually realize what the other people are thinking about this topic. I mean, he keeps on asking, are you discreet? Do many right. people know about you? And yeah. uh, he seems to appreciate a lot the fact that Christie's character is discreet and so yeah. on. So yeah, and I, I was more interested in actually seeing how the homosexual characters think of themselves more than hearing what the other mm. ones have to say about them. I think it's 
for me it was more interesting to see it reflected in this yeah. mirror kind of system to see what right. they are thinking about themselves. Yeah. We will definitely come back to that scene that you just mentioned mm -hmm. because, uh, yeah, indeed, it was um, it was a very striking one. Mm -hmm. um, but let's first talk a bit about the structure of this film. It has three different parts, mm -hmm. and it uses different aspect ratios in the in the different parts. So, can you talk a bit about this structure and what was your motivation behind this choice? Well, I arrived at this because I wanted to see the story from her angle and from his angle and then to see the story together with both of them and also I think I mean the idea behind this choice was that you can never get a full picture until you see both of them in the shot right. and that only happens in the third part so it was organical it wasn't something like okay let's do something fancy and just shoot it square in square format yeah. it we arrived at this through the characters and through trying to understand their vision and the other characters' vision on, on the main characters. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Um, for you guys, I mean, you both play very complex characters uh, who seem to be trapped in their particular mm -hmm. situations. Um, how did you approach building up these very complex characters? Um. Strikingly and very rapidly, <laughs> very fast <laughs> in my case. Um, I was very connected to Marius from, from the beginning, uh, talking to him always and being connected, to always communicating about uh, his wishes and how he sees uh, Dana, the character. First of all, that was for me the, the guideline throughout the entire process. And um, also, me being very sensitive to, to the story, which I connected to from the beginning, and I liked, I liked it a lot. I resonated with, mm -hmm. uh, with the characters and with the entire... Um, it actually talks to me a lot about, and I was thinking about that uh, this morning, um, that it relates not only to people in a, lo in a love relationship, or not only to people who are um, struggling with this uh, sexual identity issues, yeah. Um, it talks to me directly about <coughs> this um, situation in which you you are protecting your own way of seeing things mm -hmm. so much that you miss the point and you miss the actual meeting with the other yeah. because you are so convinced that you have the right way of seeing things and I tend to do that I mean mm -hmm. I see myself a lot in this Probably and do, yeah. Um, yeah although I'm not facing this sexual sexuality uh, I'm issues I find myself being there in terms of uh, being overprotective of my beliefs yeah. and not really listening I mean missing the, yeah. the other yeah, the so. point. Yeah. what about you <laughs> for me it was um, an intense work with uh, Mar Marius during uh, probably six months or more I think it was more. even more it was almost more. a year time um, one oh. year time okay. Yeah, and um, uh, <clears throat> it was a completely different approach actually because what Yudi didn't say is that she got into the project uh, in this part two days before we actually started shooting. Okay, yeah. So, that's <laughs> and that's because I mean the short film had another actress for the main part. And what I couldn't arrive in finding with this actress was the vulnerability I really wanted to, the character to have. Yeah. And we rehearsed a lot with Christy and with the other actress. And we were just talking about this actually this morning, the fact that oh, Dana is revealing at one point what she did before coming yeah. back home. And we had this discussion in the rehearsals with the other actress. Is that true or is it false what she's saying? And she really wanted it to be true because she wanted both of them to be on the same level. With right. you, did yeah, to be even exactly. That's the right word. Uh -huh. And actually, with you, did she said to me, "No, I I know I love him so much that I can, you know, I can go with him without necessarily having this uh, even." Uh, yeah, clause, uh, you yeah. know, yeah. fulfilled. Exactly. So, um, 
Yeah, I, I, with Judith, I felt that their relationship was, uh, sorry, was, uh, was honest and was mm -hmm. truthful and something I really wanted myself as yeah. a viewer to see on the screen. Yeah. But yeah, com going back to what I was saying, the approach was different because with Judith, I felt she was the character. With Christy, I felt that he needed to become the character. Uh -huh. And we worked quite a lot on that. And he yeah. put up with a lot of my... <laughs> yes, because for me, it was my first uh, feature film. Yeah, okay. yeah. I work um, in theater, theater. and uh, it it was uh, the yeah, language is is, uh, is yeah, di different, different, and uh, I remember now about that movement of my head, which <laughs> yeah, it's you have to Maybe. become accustomed to the way yeah. people are looking at you, and just you know the fact that the frame was square yeah. and the close-ups were Definitely. really extreme. Any tiny thing was visible, yeah. Um, but I. I remember you did stop moving your eyebrows because I, I keep doing this yeah, while the I camera talk. Yeah, the is everything they say. <laughs> <laughs> and stop moving your head like Michael Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and was this casting a difficult process? I mean, just because of the subject matter, I can imagine that for a lot of actors, and you talked about that this is still somewhat a taboo topic in Romania, yeah. that for a lot of actors it would have yeah, I, I, I can remember um, we were in the rehearsals with... I rehearsed with another actor for quite some time before actually casting Christy for this part. And I remember one other actor, they were friends, uh, met the main actor and said, uh, what happened to you? You used to be a sane guy and now you're playing this kind of characters in a film. Wow. And that was... Uh, yeah. That okay. was a, so it's yeah it's complicated and also I mentioned this in the Q and A somebody asked me it's um, there is a certain image that a gay character has in the mind of uh, of people and especially Romanian people it should be you know it's just made of cliches and it, this yeah. is kind of what the film is trying to avoid on every level you I know it's that's that for sure you know it's. I mean, don't judge someone by the fact that he or she keeps the hand like this or does a head movement or... And it's, yeah, it's just, it's a lot of superficial judgments that we kind of try to put aside. Definitely. Um, for me, it was interesting that um, certain film techniques were used very often and, uh, for instance, we see the characters often in these claustrophobic spaces, mm -hmm. they are framed a lot, especially with, with Dana's character, we see like with the taxi's window frame or mm -hmm. in, the, in the train station with the mirror's frame. They seem to be like even visually like trapped in, in a really tough little space mm -hmm. where, where they don't really know what to do with that and how to get out of that. Um, can you explain a bit more about, about this? Sort yes, of it is that. It's about being trapped and it's also about what's left outside of the frame. You know, you just... Mm -hmm. A lot of time you feel they are trapped, but you don't know exactly what's beyond what you see. Yeah. And there is this question all the time, what am I missing? You know, and it... I, I think this format the square one kind of was the answer f to, a, to a lot of things we wanted to, to say with the film. You know, it's being trapped, missing a lot of things as a, as a viewer and as, yeah. a, as someone who gets to know these characters. And yeah, I think, I think also, you know, there's, there's a link with Instagram too. It's just, mm. you kind of get just this instant, this instant, that instant, yeah. and you need to make an opinion based on that. Yeah. Just, yeah. So, there was, it wasn't, you know, like an instant decision, this one, to shoot it square from it. Yeah. Yeah. And also, when you have, sorry. No, no, no. When you have that moment when the frame is getting uh, square and then it's getting wide yeah. again. We discussed about having that or not having that in the film and I wanted to have that moment just to you know to give another layer about mm -hmm. this square thing about the square format to say that it also this kind of being trapped and being in one situation also gives them some comfort you know of 
separates them from the rest yeah. of the world. And it's, it's not a comfortable situation, but in the same time, you know, judging by his encounter with the other men, this gives them a lot of protection. And sometimes maybe they are looking for this feeling and this situation in which they are trapped just to, just to, be, just to feel safe. Yeah. What, what was your take on this? This is on what this? I wanted to say now about what you just said. And also... Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> you said it, I think, better than I would have. Um, and also this idea when you said that we have this frame, this restrictive frame, yeah. then it makes us question what's left outside of it and what we don't see. It also has a lot to do with the images and the, the coats that we put on to yeah. be seen in a certain way. And that's a lot that the others don't know about us. And also this uh, claustrophobic uh, at points, and I didn't realize that it is like that until the big frame opened, and I saw yeah. it, and I, I had this feeling of, okay, exactly. like a, a, a breath of fresh air. Um, it, it, it's also for me says this that even if you are connected, you have people around you, you are still restricted in mm -hmm. in your little box and in your little yeah. problems and issues that maybe the others have no clue about. Yeah. So that was for me. What I noticed yesterday uh, was that even uh, the the sound was changed. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. When it's yes. getting wide, yeah. you start to hear more more sounds and more noises. Yeah. It opens yeah, the, up. All like some sort yeah. or something like that. It was like a yeah. perfect yeah. <laughs> yeah. morning. But, uh, but it's good that you mentioned it because I also felt that it was like such a visceral uh, moment when it opened up that it's finally like oh, finally I can breathe, and then you start to feel that, oh yeah, like I felt a bit trapped myself as well, while it was just that square that, that I was looking at. And then, now that you mentioned that, it also somewhat refers back to Instagram and all these social media, mm -hmm. and how we interact with like a big part of our lives mm -hmm. is through these really mm -hmm. little square things where you try yeah, to like squeeze all, yourself in. It's a lot about the now, you know, I'm seeing this and I'm putting this label on yeah. someone and I, then afterwards I'm it. not changing it. I, yeah, I put a yeah. full stop and that's it. Yeah. Uh, another theme that was very interesting to me is that the film sort of um, challenges traditional notions of, of love, of being together of what it means to be in a relationship but also um i i and that was but we can talk about that later what it means um to be a woman who doesn't necessarily fit the expectations of society or doesn't want to mm -hmm. um but yeah let's talk about this um this aura of challenging traditional notions of of yeah relationships, love, being together. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually really, really happy, happy that you mentioned this because I think in a way in Romania the topic and I assume it's, you know, it's something that happens everywhere, not just in Romania. This topic of a woman who doesn't want to have children, yeah. it's a very touchy one. And I think, uh, you know, it's I mean, what she says there, people have different interpretations of what she's saying when she's saying, I don't want to have a child because I can't give him anything besides insecurity. Yeah. But she's honestly, I mean, we discussed about this a lot and she's saying that because that's actually what she believes. She's not covering for him when she's saying mm -hmm. that. Absolutely. You know, and it's, yeah, it has something to do with him, but not just with him. It's, you know, it's... One thing, I would, one thing I would like people to think about when they are seeing the film is, okay, it's not necessarily that difficult to have a child, but when, once you have that child, what are you actually offering to him or to her? Because do you know for sure that you're going to be there for him or for her for a long period of time and support, support that child yeah. and offer what he or she needs to, you know, to be happy? Because it's... I mean, we live in a crazy world and it's kind of complicated to say, okay, I project a human being there and what's yeah. next? Yeah. And the struggle is real. It is real. I, um, I'm in a relationship and Radu and I, we got married at the pressures of mm. uh, the family yeah. uh, on one side, that they were pressures, yeah, constantly not aggressive, but actually 
passive aggressive yeah, because exactly. you hear this question a lot, a lot. Yeah. And okay, when are you getting married? Okay, how long are you going to be in this? Mm. Yeah, once you know state, yeah. yeah. No state. And <laughs> one state, yes. And once you get married, then the infinite question, never ending question from everyone, okay, and when is the baby coming? Okay, and when are you having a baby? Okay, the clock is ticking. Yeah. And it's really a frustrating because for me, it's, these are such intimate and so, so such personal things that. It should be banned from people to just yeah. ask this people. This is actually when are you quite get... funny, you know, because after they go to like, when are you getting married? Then it's like, when are you gonna have your first child? And then, and then when you have, the when is when is the second <laughs> child? The and time, when yeah. you have the second child, they go and saying, okay, they go and say to the child, when when are you gonna get yeah. married? And it's starts yes, again. It's just an endless yeah. circle. Yeah. 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 So yeah, absolutely. So and yeah, how... we live in this society where these things are very very important. And they matter more for the surface and for the image of it rather than what you feel in, within uh, yeah. a relationship. And maybe you, you can also yeah. say something about the referendum. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, yeah, I mentioned this yesterday when somebody asked. We had in Romania, we had a referendum last year because the constitution in Romania says now that marriage is the union between two people. And there are a lot of institutions and people who get scared because this definition is not clear enough and they wanted to change it into the union between a man and a woman and they spent 40 million euros and it's not like Romania is the wealthiest country, you know, it's, it's not like we don't have anything better to do with that money. But they decided to spend that money to make a referendum, to organize a referendum to change the legal definition. And interestingly enough, uh, not too many people showed up. Okay. Yeah, so it, it wasn't validated. So it did not pass. Yeah, yeah it's, the, the definition is still the same. It's between yeah. two people. But, mm. no, it hasn't yeah. been validated, and that gives us a bit of hope in terms of, okay, yeah. mentality changes. Yeah. It takes a long time, probably, and it's a hard process. Mm. That's a lot to be discussed there. I mean, yeah, yeah, I doubt. yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, let's then let's talk a bit about this this whole thing with femininity in the film because it really proposed um, an avenue to understand um, that yeah, being a woman is not only about giving new life and I don't know taking care of the family, but you can have another desire and you really can stand up for yourself and I think in that in that sense your character definitely did that because in that scene with, um, with the grandmother we see that yeah she stands up for herself and she speaks her mind and says that yeah this is just it and, and that's how it goes um, so I, I wonder what did that mean to you as an actress to to go into that direction with your character I totally uh, agree with the, with the character's decisions and uh, I am in the same resonance with her beliefs. Yeah. Um, so it was only natural for me to kind of, I didn't, I just stood up to the same yeah. values and ideas. Yeah. So um, it was not a, a question of yeah. uh, questioning it at all. So yeah. I felt good doing that. It felt really. Great. I felt yeah. that I am there saying that and yeah. being in a complete resonance to it. Yeah. So. Okay, let's get back to that scene that we already mentioned in, in in the beginning. I mean, for me personally, it was a very uncomfortable thing to witness throughout, and I was constantly just shooting that please just leave, just just go home, or I don't know, like, or just. But don't you think that gives? Someone else. I don't yeah. know. Don't you think that gives? an information about his solitude and about his need Absolutely. of contact if he Absolutely. tolerates that guy yeah it was a very definitely it was mm. a very desperate seek seeking out for intimacy and for connection Affection, yeah, yeah. Um, but overall it it tackles a lot of things that i think are prominent and are discussed um, in more or in some cases less details uh, within 
um, the gay community, which includes, of course, these online apps, being discreet, how much to share when, when there is a situation like that, um, safe sex or not, mm -hmm. which all comes up. So I was wondering, um, how did you build up that scene? Did you do any research on, on these kind of milieus mm -hmm. and this kind of uh, mm -hmm. life? Yes, I did. I mean, it would have been impossible to do it yeah. without knowing these things. And also a lot of it changed. That's probably the most rehearsed scene mm -hmm. in, uh, in the film, actually. <laughs> I remember the other actors saying at one point, I don't think we'll ever make this film. You just want us <laughs> to rehearse this scene over and over again. <laughs> and yeah, I think we rehearsed it for a very long time. And every time we were looking for whatever didn't feel, how should I say, honest to the situation. I mean, for me, that's probably the most uncomfortable character to play in the entire film because it's, he's just, he's a sympathetic character and then he's not at all sympathetic and then be, he becomes a bit fragile himself and again you're saying, okay, maybe there's a chance with this guy and then he goes weird again and he's just doing yeah, that. He even becomes abusive in a, in a, in yes, a certain sense. Yes, he is. Sense. Yes, yes, yeah. he is. But I think, you know, and that's why I like that character so much and I mentioned this before, is that he's kind of lending a lot of the of a heterosexual vision on a homosexual and he's yeah. just he's making it himself you know he's he's kind of saying you know i'm not what i know i am and that's why i can judge i mean he's very judgmental of almost everybody every gay guy he came into into in, interaction with yeah. so yeah yeah i mean it's it's complicated i think it's a lot of a lot of uh, the scenes required, you know, finding out about these mm -hmm. things, things how they happen, and yeah, I got to talk with a lot of people, and I forced Christy to go on Grinder and to talk to people there, which wasn't very comfortable for him, I think. It was like you should go and just see how it is because yeah. it's. As you said, it's also um, about the media, just yeah. not knowing exactly who you're talking with and things happen really fast and then they end really fast and it's, what exactly is the level of connection there? It's yeah. like how many times are you actually lucky to find someone that you can connect with? Yeah, even for that short period of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and it's like, challenge. you know, you believe what someone says and then you realize it's false and then you're like, maybe I was wrong and... Yeah, in, in yeah. this sense, it's a very, what should I say, roller coaster yeah. kind of scene. But I felt like it was a very honest scene with, uh, yeah, I, uh, with I, all its darkness and, and, and humorous elements even mm -hmm. at some point. Um, was this a particular aim to make it as honest and as real as possible? Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. I mean, I had the same aim with the entire film. It's, yeah. it's not like, okay, this scene I want to make mm -hmm. it honest and the rest of the film. Yeah. I, can, I mean, but, it, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just that um, I feel that probably there with that scene it's easier to see because it's probably different from what most people experience, I think, in a way. And that's why, because it's striking, you kind yeah. of realize these traits yeah. better, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's, I, I've, been, I've been saying this to them. There was this article in a Romanian newspaper about the film and somebody read the article and then le left a comment and said something like, I'm really sure after seeing the trailer, yeah. I'm really sure there's going to be an LGBT kind of thing in this film and they are going to show some bare asses in the film and uh, uh, it's going to go and win some awards and what's the point of that, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and it's, yeah, it's probably going to be received with this kind of yeah. Uh, attitude. attitude, yeah. yeah. And, but the only chance you stand in this kind of situations is to make an honest yeah. statement yeah. about it. Yeah, because I even felt like that um, in a certain meta-level sense, maybe, it had 
a documentary film to it, which maybe comes with the different film techniques used, but also, yeah, with these really honest and raw mm -hmm. scenes that we see. And at the same time, you know that it's a it's a scripted mm -hmm. narrative in the sense. Mm -hmm. But then you also mentioned that the, a lot of that comes from actual talks and from mm -hmm. real stories. Mm -hmm. um, so so yeah, I'm, I'm from, wondering and from about real this. interaction. And it's, I mean, for me, it's always very important to believe the characters that I'm seeing in the film. You know, if I don't feel that I'm seeing real people in the film, no matter how good the film is, yeah. it doesn't, I, I can't connect. Yeah. So that's my aim when I'm directing and when I'm writing and also my aim as a viewer. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it is well documented and yeah. it's, I hope, I hope and it, I take this as a big compliment, the fact that it feels lived in a way, it feels like yeah, it definitely real does. experience. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah, yeah. And with the sound in general, uh, I felt that the connection there is more with the portrayal of Bucharest as a city, mm -hmm. and it kind of gives, I mean, in a literal sense as well, but maybe beyond that as well, a voice to that city. And it was very interesting because, and we mentioned that already, that um, when the two characters come together, like even the sounds, picks up and, yeah, you and, can and, hear and more it comes more and alive. And yeah, in the beginning, in, in the square shots, it's really also like muffled and... Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. yeah, it's... We tried something with the sound. I mean, the sound is probably the least realistic, has the least realistic approach out of all the bits in the film. And that's because I decided together with the sound designer that we're gonna stick with the character, with the main character, no matter where he or she yeah. is So, uh, in relationship with the camera. So if you have yeah. the camera outside the taxi, but the main character is in the taxi, inside the taxi, you hear the sound as if you were inside the taxi. Yeah. And that was a rule that we respected all through the film. So even if, for example, you have that shot on uh, Dana when she's getting inside the building and mm. it's from very far away, but you yeah. hear it as if you were next to her. Yeah. So, yeah, and I, I felt that this was giving an information about how I wanted you to see these characters. I wanted right. you to see the characters as if you were with them at all times. Mm. Well, the film ends with questions. Yes. <laughs> um, why did you stay with me? Why do you stay with me? Mm. Um, and I was wondering because also the film had this element of, okay, what's beyond the frame? Um, and we leave the characters with these questions. So I was kind of, you know, started to think that, okay, like, what's why? beyond the frame <laughs> now? Not even okay. necessarily why, because I think in a way the film provides um, on the level of emotions, mm -hmm. an answer to that. Why did they stay together all that time mm -hmm. with that knowledge in mind? Mm -hmm. um, and why do they still try to somehow find a way to, to deal with this whole mm -hmm. situation? Um, but yeah, I was really wondering where, where do they go? What, what's, what's happening with these characters beyond? I think we should all share our vision yeah. of the yeah. ending. Now. I think that would be awesome. <laughs> I think uh, I think it's up to to the viewer. I think it's a nice way to to let the viewer develop their own uh, their own uh, resolution yeah. in in a relation with their beliefs and maybe question their beliefs. Yeah. I think. The, the conclusion that maybe you you draw after seeing the film puts puts us in in the position of questioning why would I, why do I feel that they should separate mm -hmm. or why do I feel that they should stay together yeah. I think it's it's a it's nice to have a question and not to be directed towards uh, yeah. towards a definite full stop <laughs> yeah. so I think although the name the, the title is monsters. Period. Full stop, yeah. It actually ends with... With the three dots. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that, that's a nice way of thinking about it. And what do you think? About the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, or what do you hope for your character? 
for me, I think um, uh, I think uh, Dana for me for uh, Arthur mm -hmm. uh, means uh, stability, and uh, I think uh, I can. You can't live without me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, And what is your? Well, for me, it's, it's important to, to have the audience to think why, why would I stay with someone in these conditions and also reflect on their own lives and their own you know, choices in life. And yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the, the, that scene continued for a bit longer and Watching the reaction here, it was obviously the world premiere, so the first yeah. time we should we seen the film yeah. with public. I felt that there there was a need among some people to have a clear ending, mm -hmm. and it would have probably been like, okay, now it's solved. I know how it ended. Right. I can go home, yeah. uh, do my stuff, and not think about this film anymore. But that's not the point. I mean, if this film is necessary for any reason, that reason should be that the audience needs to think about themselves you know it's yeah. otherwise it would be just a product two hours and yeah. so yeah. yeah so I can't tell you yeah. what my take is on that yeah. no but I, I, I really hope that people will connect and reading the reviews and everything it feels like yeah. if there was one big plus with the film it was that everybody kind of empathized with the yeah. two of them so that's right that, that's that made me really case. happy. Yeah, yeah. I would, in particular, like to thank you for it because I thought that it was a very nice way of looking at what love can mean between two people, mm -hmm. and it was a very different take on that. Because ultimately, and that was, and that's just my reading, mm -hmm. that these two characters they love each other to death, like, and that love kind of overrides a lot of other things that that are there. So yeah, thank, thank you. you so much for thank you. for being here with us. Um, I wish you all the best for, for the Berlin Alley. Thank you. And hopefully we will see each other soon again. Thank you very much. It was a very pleasant thank you. experience. Thank you.